the Frozen Sonic Mega 8KS 3D Resin Printer plus Mega Wash and Cure Station. Let's give them a review. Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. Hey guys, a few weeks back now, I let you know that Frozen had revamped their Mega 8K printer, creating the much anticipated Mega 8KS. Frozen have very kindly sent me one along to review for you guys, along with their wash and cure station. Before going further, if you have a genuine interest in this printer, I would urge that you look at my original Mega 8K video. This was much more in depth than this video will be, as quite honestly, I have a lot more to talk about today. So do check out that video to get a fuller view of what I'll be saying here today. In a similar vein, I pretty much covered this topic in my recent news video. And I do hate repeating myself. So let's begin there. The Frozen Sonic Mega 8K is massive. It's huge, it's heavy, and it's not for those without deep pockets. However, just as Frozen revamped their Mini 8K with a cheaper but still equally capable Mini 8KS, They've also put their Mega 8K on a crash diet, giving us the new Mega 8KS. Gone are the big metal doors, and in comes the quite attractive plastic flip-top lid. We've still got the enormous build plate, dual linear rails, and high strength construction, it seems. But most importantly, we still have the 43 microns of XY resolution which is better than any of their competition. The 8KS, however, leaps forward of its older brother by improvements in printing speeds. Now, yes, I know, everyone's making claims of increased speeds at the moment, thanks to ACF liners and low viscosity resins, though these are all usually at the cost of quality. But this demo on their Instagram page claim speeds of 600 layers per hour, and the results look quite impressive. It's not all roses, though. The 8KS says goodbye to internet connectivity, and lovers of the large menu screen will see a drop in size from 5 to 3.5 inches. And most critically, the print height is reduced by 10 centimeters. However, there's apparently a new resin pump to both top up and empty the copious vat. But the biggest bonus for the 8KS is the price, a massive $800 less. And that certainly makes this printer more accessible to those seeking huge printing or mass production capabilities. Well, that was the information I had at the time, and I think it's fair to say, with the exception of printing, which I'll cover more in a moment, that everything I said previously was pretty accurate. I'll be honest, I really like this printer. I think it's gorgeous, so props have to go to Frozen's design department. Like the original, the 8KS is supposed to arrive with a pre-leveled build plate, but unfortunately mine wasn't level. And for this review, that's not a bad thing. Many folks were uncomfortable with Frozen's pre-leveled promise, and the prospect of this huge metal slab not being easy to level by the user was quite off-putting. Fortunately, a small design change to the plate, and a very easy to follow help article on their website, had me leveling this plate with confidence. And that's how it should be. The dual linear rails are still impressively robust, and so is the Z-arm. This now cleverly incorporates two metal hooks to suspend the plate in an ideal dripping position, which thanks to the holes in the build plate is much needed and welcomed. The switch has moved to a beveled corner, along with a power point. The USB port remains on the front, and as stated, there's no connectivity with the 8KS. The menu screen has shrunk considerably, but it's not small when compared to most other printers, and the operating system is typically clear and easy to follow. Some may hate the replacement of those large metal doors with a flip-top lid, but I'm not one of them. 
those doors took up a lot of room on the workbench, whereas the flip top lid offers both cost and space saving. If you're worried about height restrictions, the clever placement of the hinges means that the lid doesn't pass too much higher than the main unit, and stiff hinging means it will stop at pretty much any angle you position it. The inside of the 8KS has venting port access, though the overall interior is a little bit smaller than the 8K. It's chilly in my workshop right now, and resin printers like the warmth. I was able to fit my homemade enclosure heater inside the 8KS, but barely, and I added a clear cover to prevent splashing. I really wish Frozen would make an enclosure heater. They're not alone, I've nagged most manufacturers, but for some reason they all seem to drag their feet on this issue. Instead, like others, Frozen have opted to put time and effort into designing a resin pump for the 8KS, to both feed and empty the immense vat. Unfortunately, whilst Frozen have apparently sent me one of these, at the time of recording it hadn't arrived so I can't comment on it, but I can clearly see from the menu screen that the pump is optional to use through the operating system. If the pump does turn up, I'll do a short follow-up video dedicated to the subject and place a link in the description for easy access. When it comes to 3D printing, it prints every bit as well as the earlier model. There's no changes to resolution, but the 43 microns offered by the 8KS is still better than anything produced by similar mega-sized rivals. This means you can expect nice quality prints up to very impressive proportions, though as stated, not quite as tall as on the 8K. And of course, there's also the opportunity of mass production. I am surprised Frozen has resisted the urge to slip in a 12K upgrade here, or even offer it at an additional charge. This would have really separated it from the competition, and I'm worried for Frozen that other companies might not be so slow to upgrade their mega machines. Perhaps Frozen is relying on speed claims to bolster their marketing. Sure enough, the 8KS comes with a semi-opaque ACF liner fitted to its immense resin tank to improve printing performance. But full transparency here, I was not able to replicate their speed print claims. I did write to Frozen and ask for details of the model, resin and settings they used in their promotional videos. In fact, I wrote twice, but at the time of recording this video they had not responded, and so for now I remain sceptical. I've reviewed several printers claiming increased speeds with ACF liners, and to date I have yet to validate any of them. Quick edit, just as I was putting the finishing touches to this video, Frozen got in touch. It looks as though I may be able to get hold of the settings after all. So in a few days time, I'll be doing a separate video to test Frozen's speed printing claims. With any luck, the link to that will appear in this top corner here. If it doesn't, then check the description. The Wash Mega S is a monster, or rather, it can drown a monster, as it holds an incredible 25 litres of cleaning fluid. Now that is a lot of IPA, and frankly, I don't have that much. So to test the principle, I've just half filled the wash station come hot tub with water, and that's still a lot of fluid to move around. It has two very large impellers that always start slowly, but are more than capable of churning liquid with vigour. It comes with a large chrome basket that holds prints up to 300mm tall, and it has a tap or faucet to our American friends for easy liquid removal, so make sure this is closed before you start filling. Whilst this is highly practical, I'm not keen on its position. It takes up too much space on the right hand side especially with the hose adapter fitted, and if like me, you have a habit of knocking into protruding things with unfortunate force, there's a nasty accident waiting to happen here. Whilst it would spoil the appearance, I think the tap would be better suited on the front for easy access. 
I'm sure we thought it could be better hidden. It has two settings, high and low, and both seriously churn the 13 litres of water I poured in. So I'm confident it wouldn't bulk at 25 litres. There's also a number of frame inserts, with at least one of these holding the 8KS plate, and the others, maybe they fit other frozen build plates. I don't like the appearance of this wash station, and I think someone, somewhere, will knock off this tap and end up ankle deep in dirty IPA. But who cares about the appearance when you have a massive print that needs washing? And one thing's for sure, the Wash Mega S will do it with ease. The Mega QS is suitably massive, and frankly, I've seen smaller kitchen ovens. Despite its size, I've fallen in love with it, and it's my new favourite curer. With metal construction reminiscent of the original Mega 8K, it has a single right hinge door and enough room inside for a supplied shelf, giving you two curing layers. There's UV lights at the top, bottom and sides, and together with a spacious turntable, you'll get excellent overall coverage. It has two large fans that can help dry washed prints, and the operating system gives you the choice of drying or curing and drying together. With a minimum of one minute and a maximum of two hours, there's plenty of cycle options. It even has an interior light. There's only two drawbacks with this drying station. The first is the power switch, which, as with the printer and wash station, is located at the rear, which for me is a mistake on equipment this size, where front access would be preferable. The second drawback is the physical size. It will swallow up your workbench. But that's the nature of the beast. It has to be big to cure very large prints, like those that are possible on the 8KS. There are links in the description to the products mentioned in this video. And, full disclosure here, these are affiliate links. Frozen has made it clear to me that if I don't include affiliate links with my videos, then they might not be able to send me items to review in the future. So I guess I have no choice. And to add insult to injury, if you're in the Euro area and you click one of these affiliate links, you may get freaked out by this message. It's nothing sinister, just the affiliate company following EU laws. So just click continue. On the bright side, if you do make a purchase through this link, I'll get a small commission, and that will help support my channel. So thanks to all those that do. So, the Frozen Sonic Mega 8KS 3D Resin Printer. What are my thoughts? Actually, I like it. Genuinely, if I was offered the Mega 8K or the Mega 8KS, I would go with the 8KS, as I love its styling and it prints every bit as well. If you need another 10 centimeters of print height, or you're absolutely set on Ethernet, then you will need the Mega 8K. But if, like me, you can live without these, then you'll find the Mega 8KS not only much more affordable, but more convenient to use. I think Frozen is still the king of the Mega printers, and will remain so until someone else plugs in a 12K screen or higher. I'm not yet convinced that it prints faster, but for me, right now, this is the best of the bunch, and a worthy successor to its heavier and more expensive older brother. So that's it for this review guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Take care, and thanks for watching.